we live in ignorance. Knowledge is just a little piece of information we have about the world, and it's constantly corrected. Truth with a big capital T is nonsense, in my opinion. We know what, it, what true means in our everyday life. Uh, if we ask what is the absolute truth, that, that doesn't mean anything. Carlo Rovelli is theoretisch natuurkundige en schrijft over de meest ingewikkelde onderwerpen. Hij wordt ook wel de poëet van de natuurkunde genoemd. Herzlich willkommen, Carlo Rovelli. Dit jaar was hij een van de openingssprekers van de grootste boekenbeurs ter wereld, de Frankfurter Boegmessen. Kwantummechanica is Rovelli's grote liefde. Zo doet hij onder andere onderzoek naar een nog onbegrepen fenomeen als kwantumzwaartekracht. Ook schrijft hij populaire boeken over andere raadsels uit de natuurkunde. Bijvoorbeeld het mysterie van de tijd en dat de werkelijkheid niet is wat die lijkt. Ik ben een theoretische fysicist. Ik doe fysiek. En het lijkt me dat... A lesson from modern physics, or maybe from modern science in general, is that if we think in terms of interactions, in terms of relations between things, we understand the world better. Let me let me make this concrete. Um, we naturally tend to think in terms of object, a chair or a pen, okay? And we think that this pen is just by itself a pen, um, independently of us. But it's not the case, because uh, just look at this. It's a pen because we write. If somebody came from a different planet, wouldn't call it a pen because wouldn't know its function. It's red. Uh, red is a point in the space of colors, but the space of colors depend on our retina. So the redness, the being red of this, it depends on our eyes and the light. Now, one may say, yeah, of course, but... Uh, This is made by atoms, these are things there. But modern physics tell us the atoms themselves, the only way we understand it, we can describe them, is how they interact with something else. So if, you, if I take away the light, take away my eyes, take away my culture, take away my... There's nothing that remains here. The pen, we really understand it as a network of interactions around it. And this is everything. So it's better to start from the interactions and see the objects as uh, sort of nodes in a network of interactions around them. This is relational thinking. One of the central themes also in your work is there is no reality. Uh, can you explain that? Yeah, I mean, of course there is reality. I mean, this is a chair is real. I'm real, you're real, the light is real. Um, I think There's no reality in, in, a, in the following sense. Um, it's a mistaken conceptual idea that there's a bottom, the final story about reality. I think it's much better for us and much more useful and much more honest to forget about ultimate reality. It's not a good question about ultimate reality. A good question is, can we understand better? Can we go in the forest and study the trees? And in the trees there are the leaves, the, the little bugs, and we study the bugs, and the, the cells, and the atoms. We can study more and more and more. But that's reality, the, the, the ensemble of the thing we can access to. The idea of a final bottom line of truth reality, that reality in the sense of the ultimate reality beyond all possible appearances, uh, is a bad idea. All possible appearances are reality. So what you say is you should study the relations? Exactly. The green forest seen from a distance uh, is the forest seen by me here. It's how whatever is there relates to me at a distance. Then I walk in the forest, I see the trees. Now I have a different way of being relate in relation to the forest. If I have a microscope here, or an electronic microscope and I see the atoms, uh, I have a different way of being in relation to the chair. So how the chair relates to me, how it relates to the microscope, how it relates to the light, these are relations. And now if you ask, okay, forget all relations, forget me, the microscope, the light, uh, it's just the chair by itself, that's a bad question. Because? Because there's no reality beyond the relations. <laughs> best way we have to understand the world is just in terms of relations. That's 
the best conceptual framework I believe we have today at the light of modern science uh, to think about reality. De verbonden wereld is een terugkerend thema in het werk van Rovelli. De wereld is wat wij ervan maken. Letterlijk van de atomen die wij om ons heen zien tot de manier waarop we onze toekomst vormgeven. Volgens Rovelli is de wereld één grote happening. Of beter gezegd, een opeenstapeling van gebeurtenissen. This is a thing and this is a happening. So, uh, a snapping of my finger is a happening. It does not exist before, it does not exist after. It's, it's an event, something that happens. While my finger is, is a thing. It's in, intuitive to say, okay, a happening is just things doing something, right? It's a, my snapping, it's just my fingers having done something. So we try to intuitively think about happenings in terms of things. But it's easier the other way around. It works better the other way around. My finger, it's a happening of movement of my flesh, my blood. I am a process, um, a sequence of happenings. I'm not an entity by myself, and so are you. The pen itself, if we, if we look um, on a much longer time perspective, uh, uh, the pen has formed and then it will dissolve, it will melt. Uh, even a great rock with time will dissolve. So the, a great rock is what? It's just some sand that got stick together and then um, it's a happening, a sequence of happenings. But that makes everything a happening, in fact, if yeah. you say that. Yeah, the world is a, it's a sort of huge collection of happenings related to one another. That is, they're not isolated. The snapping of my finger is something I hear, I see. It's in constant relation to the happening of my brain, your brain, or the camera brain. Dat klinkt theoretisch, maar de kwantummechanica bewijst eigenlijk dat dat idee in de diepste zin waar is. Alles om ons heen ontstaat als gevolg van energievelden die een interactie met elkaar aangaan. Gebeurtenissen zijn, simpel gezegd, energieuitwisselingen tussen die velden die zelf weer nieuwe gebeurtenissen opwekken. Het concept van de kwantummechanica heeft bij Rovelli de vraag opgewekt of ons denken en de kennis die daaruit voortkomt zelf een ding of een gebeurtenis is. Ik geloof dat in terms van relaties interactions uh, helps us precisely to um, answer this question because um, here's the wrong answer the wrong answer is that there's a world reality and then there is our spirit our mind outside it that looks at it and knows it gets some knowledge about it it's totally wrong okay why because we are inside reality we are Our brain, our thinking, our mind, our soul, whatever you want to call it, it's just part of this interacting world. So if I uh, clash my hands, one gets interact with the other one and uh, leaves an imprint on the other one. And in the same manner, uh, what's around me leaves an imprint of my brain, and that's knowledge for me. So knowledge, I think, is not outside reality, looking at reality, is one part of reality, which is us, uh, interacting with the rest. But can one search in all these interactions for something like the right knowledge? Um, yes. Um, so I think the, the best question is not uh, what is the right knowledge. The best question is what is the wrong knowledge. Because it's easy to know what is wrong knowledge, right? Um, Knowledge, our knowledge has a property that we can communicate uh, to one another, which is another interaction. So I see a watch and I tell you, hey, there's a watch here. And you hear me saying that, and then you see the watch and say, yeah, okay. So you, you, what I told you gives you some information about you will, you actually could see. So that's communication, that's real communication between us. My knowledge, your knowledge, the watch here. But obviously, it could be that I tell you, oh, look, there's a watch here. And you look say, no, I mean, there's no watch there. Watch the other side. So you say, Carlo, you're wrong. Okay? What you said, Carlo, is false. It's not true. That's the meaning of truth, in my opinion. Is, um, 
it's what is not false. <laughs> is what is uh, we want knowledge to be coherent and to work and want to be trustable in our communication. Now, of course, precisely because knowledge is not something absolute. Uh, it's just a, an, a certain amount of information we have about the world. Um, we never know everything. Our knowledge is always very limited. Science is not about knowing everything. It's about knowing a little bit. I think if you read the great scientists, Newton, um, Einstein, Maxwell, you feel this sense of the, how limited is knowledge. Newton has beautiful words. He says that Newton is probably the greatest scientist we ever had. He could understand reality in a marvelous way. We still build things thanks to his insights. And yet at the end of his life, he says, um, I feel like a boy playing with a stone uh, on a beach in front of the ocean of our ignorance. Right? So we live in ignorance. Knowledge is uh, just a little piece of information we have about the world uh, and it's constantly corrected. And the way we correct it is by saying, oh, look, this is false. Okay? If I tell you my watch is here, you say, no, no, that's false. And I say, my watch is here, you look at it and say, that's true, that's truth. Truth with a big capital T is nonsense, in my opinion. We know what, it, what true means in our everyday life. Uh, if we ask what is the absolute truth, that, that doesn't mean anything. De waarheid bestaat dus niet, volgens Rovelli. Er zijn waarheden en onwaarheden. Het zijn gebeurtenissen die ontstaan door onze interactie, net als in de kwantumwereld. Een van die nieuwe gebeurtenissen waar we zelf verantwoordelijk voor zijn, is kunstmatige intelligentie. I feel there's a huge uh, hype around artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is useful. I mean, my washing machine works much better because it has a little artificial intelligence system. My, uh, my car drives better. May, I hope it will start driving by itself. But look, um, we t- when there is a little step ahead in some technology, we immediately think, oh my God, where we are we going? Um, we had an airplane. I grew up thinking that uh, Airplane will become faster and faster and faster. And now to travel from um, Europe to America, it takes the same time that when I was 30, it didn't get better. So I would be very careful in taking all the hype about artificial intelligence, intelligence too literally. But maybe, why not? Maybe computer could become, could do science for us, who knows? I wouldn't be surprised, I, I would not be scared. Things change, it's good that they change. I think the dangers, let me put it this way, the dangers from, for humanities come from, not for computer being foolish, it come from humans being foolish, sending nuclear bombs to one another, making war to one another. These are the dangers. Rovelli was in zijn jonge jaren al politiek actief. En dat bleek ook weer tijdens de openingsspeech bij de Boegmessen, waar hij zijn relationele denken losliet op de wereldproblemen. We, the human idiots, waste a colossal amount of resources to build weapons and use them, generating an immense amount of suffering for millions today, right now. We said never again, and we're doing it again. People are dying now, this very moment. Peoples are being exterminated, uh, country are being destroyed. And why we do that? The charitable answer is that because we are stupid. The less charitable answer is because in this way some of us become richer. I think that the future is going to be determined by the political choices. If they are wise, will humankind will thrive. Um, if they're not wise, and I don't see wise people doing choices right now, I see people going to belligerence, war, we have to win. Um, and that's very dangerous because uh, a technology that we do have is not a technology of the future. It's not a technology that we are, um, not something we might build and could be risky. A technology that we do have today is nuclear power, nuclear bomb. And we have an enormous amount of nuclear bombs and it takes nothing to boom. And that's not going to be a good future. Every two generations, humans start massacring each other. 
It's not reasonable, right? It's obviously not reasonable. And uh, we have learned to live together within countries, more or less. So we should learn how to live together across countries. And I think it's, it's going to happen. The question is, well, it's going to happen after, before the third big war and the nuclear war. So, I, yes, I am, I'm engaged politically not because I'm in a party or running for an election, but because I try to write, I try to talk. I try to uh, express ideas, which in my little... I'm not changing the world, of course, but I think everybody should push, try to push in the right direction. And for me, the right direction today is to tell the politician, cool it down, stop this massacre which is going on right now in Eastern Europe, Middle East, Africa, and places to come. So we have become part of the ecology of reality, you yeah. say? Yeah, we are. What kind of responsibility does it give us? Immense, toward ourselves. An immense responsibility. And I think some of us today are realizing that because there's a lot of talking about that. I think the responsibility is toward ourselves, humankind, as a single tribe. It's not really a responsibility toward the Earth. Of course it's a responsibility toward the Earth. It's like our home. But the Earth can survive without us, right? We could, we could do a horrendous climate catastrophe and we could all die and the Earth would recover in a blip. But we would not be happy if this happened. I think the mistake we do is we keep thinking in terms of the interests of our group, our country, our group of countries, instead of thinking of the interests of humankind as a whole. So if we want to continue, we have to sort of understand our uh, relation to the ecosystem of reality. Yes, exactly, exactly. We are not, humankind is not, it's not an isolated object. It's just a network in the ecosystem of the... So we, we, we understand ourselves as part of this uh, network of exchanges, uh, which is physical, chemical, biological, etc. And we, we meaning each of us, are part of this network, which is political, cultural. We read books, we change, we do uh, television, <laughs> film programs. Uh, our thinking is very rarely just coming from us individually. It's a little bit. Right? Each one contributes teeny, teeny. What we do is we receive uh, ideas. The ideas I'm presenting, where they come from? From the outside. Most of them come from the outside. They come to my brain, they get mixed up, uh, elaborated, judged a little bit, and then they come out. So we, we are, the ideas flow through us. It's good. It's fantastic. We are part of this network. And it's not just a network of ideas, it's a network of decision. And then we decide, we act, because we have power and we have technology. And most stupid things we should decide to do is go massacring one another, which is how we're using our resources today, by killing one another. It's just it's unbelievably stupid. Okay? And we keep saying how nasty are the enemies, how nasty are the enemies. Those enemies are the very friends we should work with for the common good.